Hi, my name is Dr. Natalie Candela. I'm a hypnotherapist and a transformation coach. Welcome to my channel. You're about to listen to a recording of one of my regression sessions. Enjoy. I want you to tell me the very first thing that you see below you or the very first impression that you get as you reach the surface. I think it's just a town, what? an old town in the 1800s and the ground is just dirt. Small buildings, once two stories. I don't see any people. Direct your attention to where your feet would be and tell me what you're wearing on your feet. Black shoes, they lace, tall, go up my shins. Become aware of the rest of your body and describe what you're wearing on your body. A dress, I think it's brown, it's long to the ground. The sleeves are long. Do you carry anything in your hands? I don't have anything. Are you in a male or female body? A girl. About how old? I think 20s. Are you healthy? Yes. Return your attention to your surroundings. Is there anything new that is now coming into your attention, into your focus, that you didn't notice before? It's just sounds of a town, an old town. Just hustle and bustle and people walking. I think they're buggies. And where are you standing? Just in the middle of the road. Are you quite safe standing there? Yes. Okay. And is there anything in particular that you're looking at or that catches your attention? I'm just watching the people. Can you look at the men and tell me how they are dressed? Brown pants. Long shirts to spinders. And what does it feel like outside right now? Is it warm, cold? It's in the 70s. It's sunny and the sky is blue. So I'd like you now to become more aware of why you are standing there. I think that I'm on my way somewhere. As you take your next breath, that awareness will gently become available to you. Where are you going? I think I'm going to church. So just allow yourself to reach your destination when I count to three. One, two, and three. And tell me what you're seeing. I'm in a church. It's just a small church, like a school, like the little house on the prairie. What do you see inside? Mm -hmm. Just benches. Nobody's there. I'm there by myself. How do you feel being there? I don't think I like it. Do you come there often? It feels like it. Just become aware of why you're not having good feeling about it. I think somebody hurt me. I'm just going to travel to that time while feeling very calm and relaxed. 
as you take your next breath, you're going to feel quite comfortable and safe. And the information that will come to you will be like a movie that you're watching on a screen. I think that somebody in the church hurt me and lost in me. In your 20s or when you It's when I was a girl. Eleven. And become aware of who it was that hurt you. It was the pastor, the person who was in charge. And were you alone with him? I don't know. Is it something that happened once or multiple times? Many times. Did it happen in the church or somewhere else? Yes. Just become more aware of the type of arrangement that you had that you were around him. I think he tricked me. In what way? He needed my help, but he knew what he wanted. And I just don't know how to say no. And your parents, are they aware? No. I don't know where my parents are. And how long did this go on? Months, maybe? I don't think years. Do you know when or why they stopped? I think somebody found out. And what happened? They just needed to stop, and it stopped. Are you still part of this church? No. And so on this day, why did you come back to this church? I think that I need to talk to him. So go ahead, walk through the church and see if you can find him. See you there? No, he's not there. Somebody else is there. Are you going to talk to the somebody else? No. Become aware of what you wanted to discuss with him. I just want to know why. See. So let's leave that scene for just a moment. And on the count of three, I'd like you to see yourself standing in front of a place where you live. One, two, and three. Tell me what you see. It's a small white house. I don't see anybody yet. Just very plain. Do you see things next to the house? No. Go ahead and walk inside the house and tell me what you see there. I see a cozy little house. It's small, maybe like 500 square feet. Kitchen table and a rocking chair. It's one story. It feels like my grandma's house. Does it have several rooms? One a big room and a bedroom. Become aware of who lives in this house. It's my grandma. Does she live there alone? Yes. So you don't live in this house? I used to. When did you live in that house? When I was small, like eight. 
So when you were a child, you lived with your grandma? Yes. And become aware of what happened to your parents, why you lived with your grandmother and not your parents. Don't know. The picture will begin to clear up with each breath becoming stronger and clearer. And all of a sudden you'll have an awareness of what happened to your parents. My dad died in a war. My mom died of an illness. And how old were you when you became an orphan? I was about eight when my mom died, but I didn't know my dad. So he died before you were born or when you were very little? I think it was before I was born. How do you get along with your grandmother? I love her. And how long do you live with your grandmother? I don't know. I think I tell him grown. Did you used to go to church with your mom when she was still alive? Yes. And then when you moved in with your grandmother, did she continue to take you to church? Yes. Was church an important part of your life? Yes. When those bad, painful things happened to you in church, did you feel comfortable talking to your grandmother about them? What did you feel at that point? Why did you want to keep it a secret? Because I knew it was bad. So on the count of three, I'd like you to see yourself having a meal in your grandmother's house. One, two, and three. And just tell me what you see. I see. Or chops and green beans. Who cooked them? My grandma. And do you know where she gets the money? Does she have to work? Yeah. She sews. She makes dresses. Does she teach you how to sew? I don't think I do. Does she talk to you about what you're going to do when you get older? She tells me I have to find a husband. On the count of three, I'd like you to move to the next significant event in that life. One, two, and three. What happens? I'm sorry. As you take your next breath, feel a warm comfort flowing all through your body, enveloping you, comforting you, making you feel safe, releasing the pain and just staying aware of what was happening. And tell me whose child it was. Who was the father? I don't know. How old are you now? Twenty. Okay. Was the child born already, or it was a miscarriage? I think it was still born. When the child is born, where are you? In my home. It's small. It's not as nice as my grandma's. It's crappy. Who lives in that home other than you? I think it's just my husband, but he isn't there. 
So it's your husband and you? Yes. And how long have you been married? One year. Is this your first child? Yes. Okay. When you were giving birth, was there anybody with you? I don't know her. Is there someone with you? A woman. Is she there to help you? Yeah. And how do you feel about her being there? I don't like her. I think she's my husband's mom. And how does she treat you? Not good enough. And does she live with you in that house or somewhere else? She lives there. And where is your husband now? He's still up there. He's gone a lot. Where does he go? Maybe it's work. And what does he do for work? Labor. How do you feel about your husband? Why did you decide to marry him? Because I was getting old. That's what they told me. How does he treat you? He's okay. So what is it that you don't like about him? I don't know. I think it's because I love the pastor. So do you live still within the same area? It's a distance. It's about two hours away. Okay. What happens after you give birth? I bury my baby. How are you feeling? I feel sad. Because the baby was going to bring me joy. I'd like you to go back to that time when you came to the church to have a conversation with a pastor. You're going to become much more aware of how you felt about the pastor and what your intentions were at that time. I want to know why. And I want to know if he loved me. Did you get to talk to him eventually? No. What were your feelings towards him at that time? Did you want him to love you? Yes, but I know he doesn't. How do you know? My intuition that he doesn't, that he's just bad. But you like him anyway? But I like him anyway. That must have been difficult having these very different feelings towards the person. I was confused. Do you think that he loved you because he was doing those things? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And is that why you liked him? Yes. Because he made it seem real, but I knew it wasn't. I see. When you realized that it wasn't real, at some point you just decided to get married? But you never really loved your husband? No. So now on the count of three, you're going to move to the next significant moment or event in that life. One, two, and three. Tell me what happens. It doesn't feel significant. 
What is happening? I don't know. I don't have any kids. I don't see any children. I just don't see the four walls. Where is your husband? He's to work. Are you there by yourself? I am there by myself. So what do you do on a daily basis? When your husband is not there, how do you spend your days? I can't tell. As you take your next few breaths, with each breath, the clarity will begin to intensify until you get real sense, real knowing you know, what it is that you do with your time or what you do for a living. I'm a mother. So you do have children? I do have children. Boys. How many boys? Three. How old are they? Their school age. And your husband provides for the whole family? Yep. And how do you feel about it? I feel good. Do you live comfortably? Does he make enough money? But we're okay. So you don't do any work to bring in more money? No. I don't think I have any skills. Okay. How is your relationship with your husband at this point? It's okay. So on the count of three, I'd like you to move to the last day of this life. One, two, and three, and tell me what's happening around you. There are people at my bed. Who are they? I think it's my husband and a son. It may be a daughter-in-law. And about how old are you now? I think in my 60s. Do you know if you're ill? Yeah. What's wrong with you? What are you experiencing? I'm just very weak. I'm very tired. I'm just ready. And as you look around, do you recognize where you are? It's the same home. And so just on the next breath, allow your spirit to lift out of your body very gently. And as it lifts above the body, I want you to look at the life that you left. And tell me how you feel about everything that you've left behind. I'm just glad to be away from Earth. So as you allow yourself, your spirit, to continue to become more aware of itself, there may be someone who is greeting you. And just become aware if anybody is there to welcome you back. It's my grandma. And how does she appear to you? She looks like what I saw her last. Does she say anything to you? No, we're just hugging. Mm -hmm. She told me that I did a good job. And so she surrounds you with love. <sighs> just absorb it and Feel it in your body and enjoy it. 
And I want you to look at your entire life from a soul perspective and become aware of what the purpose of that life was. I need contentment. So do you feel you had a successful life? Yes. Allow all of those images to fade or as you begin to wave what you experience. You're being pulled you in the direction of another to start drifting in another direction. In this way, it's loading, helping you answer your question. As you're being guided and understood, you're going to push that. And so now it's probably a time in another time in another time that you should look at. And as you reach the place, I want you to tell me the very first thing that you see as you look around you, the very first impression that you get as you find yourself in that new time and place. It's, uh, I don't know what year it is. It's okay. I'm a man. You're in a man's body? <laughs> Okay, my eyes closed. Okay, so look down at your feet and describe to me what you're wearing on your feet. They're white tennis shoes. Now become aware of your body and describe what you're wearing. I am wearing white shorts and a white polo shirt. I think I'm playing tennis. How old are you? 23, maybe 25. And are you healthy? I'm healthy. So describe to me what you see around you. I am around my family. Maybe a country club or a, maybe a nice estate. Are there a lot of people around you? There's about 30 people here, mostly family. Playing tennis, is it just for fun or is it a competition? I compete. So is this part of the competition? Not today. Oh, so today is just for fun? Yes. Okay. Look at your family and you will recognize some people. Just describe them. Who do you see there? My mom. She's pretty. Can you describe how she's dressed? She's classy. She's sophisticated. Just a nice dress. Who else do you see in the crowd? I have brothers. How many brothers do you have? I think three. Are they younger or older than you? They're older. Do you have any sisters? Yes, there's an older sister. Are you single? I'm gay. Okay. Does your family know? I think my mom does. Does anybody else know? No. Is it okay for you to share that? No. So do you plan to stay single then, or unmarried? Yes. Do you have any relationships? Yeah, there's an older man. Can you tell me about him? He is sophisticated. 
and over. He likes me, but I'm just having fun. How did you meet him? He's a friend of my family's. I see. On the count of three, see yourself standing in front of the place where you live. One, two, and three. Tell me what you see. I can't make it out. Become aware of not so much of what it looks like, but do you live by yourself with someone? I think it's just a little apartment on my family's estate. So your family has a large estate? Yeah. And you live by yourself on the estate? Yeah. So does that give you freedom and flexibility to invite people that you want? No, but I travel. Where do you travel? I'm in Europe for competition. Okay. How successful are you in competitions? I seem to be pretty good. I win mostly. Oh, excellent. And how do you spend your time when you're not competing or training? How do you feel about your life? I feel good. This is a good life. And what's your relationship like with your family? It's good. I have a good family. How do you feel about the fact that you can't really reveal the truth about yourself? I just accept it. Do you want to find someone to be with, a partner, or is that not possible? It's not, and I prefer to be alone. Why is that? I feel independent, mm -hmm. and others relationships I've had have been controlling, possessive. They wanted you to stay just with them? Yes, but I'm too busy. I travel and I don't like to be told what to do. I just like to be free. And what about your other siblings? What kind of lives are they leading? There's something with that sister. And I don't trust her. Just become aware of where that feeling is coming from. I feel she's jealous of my relationship with my mom. She is manipulative. So you're close with your mom? Yes, I love her. Is your mom closer with you than with any other children? Yeah. Why do you think that is? Because she knows. She knows that I am homosexual. And she's okay with it? Yeah. She's okay with it. Is she trying to protect you? Yes. Yes. She just wants me to be happy. She's a really good person. Then how is your relationship with your sister? Contentious. How about your brothers? They're good. They're older and I don't feel that they are around very often. Do they work? Yes. 
They are, I think, finance or merchants. So on the count of three, you're going to move to the next significant moment or event in that life. One, two, and three. And tell me what's happening. My mom died, and we are at the estate. Is the whole family there? Yeah. Yeah, that sister is controlling. What is she doing? Being very bossy. Something with the estate. Something about the money. So the next breath, just become aware of that. It will just come to you clearly. She's trying to cheat us. Is there a will? She's just trying to take more than she's supposed to. Are you discussing the will? She's trying to tell us that her parents were in debt. But that's not true. She's trying to take the money to pay the debt, but there's no debt. And where are the brothers on that? I don't think they care about the money. They're used to her being in control. So is this more of a standoff between you and her? Yes. Is your father still around? No. Okay. So is this a decision about what will become of the estate? Yes. So move in time a little bit to the resolution of that issue. What is decided in the end? I just let it go. So what happens? She got what she wanted. What exactly does she get? She just got the house. She just wanted to be there. And I... She just gave me some money, but she didn't want me there. So you have to move out of your apartment? So we're going to move to the next point where you find residence. One, two, and three. So where do you find yourself? It's like a community. A community of other people who are homosexual also. Do you all live together? No. But we live in the same area. So when you say community, you just happen to live in the same area or you get together? Yes, we all just happen to live in the same area. In the same section of town or building. How big is the town where you live? Okay. It's busy. So your parents' estate, was that in the country? Yes. And why do you think your sister didn't want you to even be on the estate? She's just mean-spirited. What about your brothers? What did they get? I don't think anything. How did it turn out that your sister got everything? That doesn't seem right. They just don't care. Do they make enough money on their own? Yes. And you as well? I don't need much. 
Are you still playing tins? I'm winding down now. And about how old are you now? In my 40s. Do you know what you would like to do after you finish playing? No. Will you have to work to support yourself? I think I have enough money and I'm resourceful. I don't worry about it. What about your personal life? Do you still have the same attitude that you don't want to be committed to any one person? Yeah. So on the count of three, I'd like you to move to the next significant event in that life. One, two, and three. Somebody is dying? The sister. Where is she? She is in the bed. I'm helping her, taking care of her. Why you? Because there's nobody else. Where are you? I'm at the estate. Okay. About how old is she? I think she's 67. Was she married? No, I don't think so. She was by herself? Yes. What about your other siblings? Are they still alive? One. How's your relationship with your sister at this point? It's okay. She knows that she was wrong. Her heart is softer now. Why is she dying? Is she ill? Yes, I think it's cancer. So do you stay in the house now while you're helping her? Yeah. And is there anybody else that's available to take care of her? So it's just the two of you? Yeah. So just allow her to come to her last day and tell me how you feel after she passes. Relief. What happens to the state? I don't know. I don't want it. You're not interested in it? Mm -mm. So what happens to it? Gets sold. And it's like a hotel. It becomes a hotel? Yes. And do you get the money? Yeah. And I wonder if you can become aware of the name that that estate had. I don't know, but it's an L. Okay. So at this point in your life, are you still maintaining the same general lifestyle? Yeah. Have you ever found anybody that you wanted to spend your life with? Mm -hmm. Okay. On the count of three, I'd like you to move to the last day of that life. One, two, and three. Tell me what's happening. I died in a car accident. Describe to me what happened. I don't know what it was. Where were you traveling? 
was where I lived. I don't see the car. I don't know what kind of car. Were you traveling in the car? I don't know. Okay, so as you take your next breath, there emerges a clear understanding and knowing exactly what happened. You will be able to understand and experience the significant events that led up to this event and the event itself. Just tell me what you know. I think I was on a motorcycle. Okay. And where were you traveling to? I'm just riding, just enjoying the day. No destination. And how old are you at this point? 52. And what happens? There's a car that hits me directly. Did you see it on the road? No. I'm looking off. I'm not paying attention. Okay. Is the death instant? Yes, I don't feel that I even knew what happened. Okay. So as your spirit rises out of your body and your awareness begins to expand, what are you feeling as you're looking at the body and the life that you left behind? I don't think I was quite ready. It feels like a life that wasn't lived. Why is that? Because I don't think I reached my full potential as a human. Mm -hmm. Become aware of what your purpose for that life experience was. To be selfless. How do you feel you did? No, I was not good at that. I was very or somewhat selfish. What would you have had to do to be more selfless? I would have to be intentional, but I wasn't. Mm -hmm. So I'd like you now to allow all of those scenes to begin to fade and float away. Now I want all of the consciousness and personality of Mindy to once again return to the body and fully integrate back into the body. I'm going to ask to speak to Mindy's higher consciousness. Is it okay for me to speak to you and ask questions? Yes. Thank you. I know that higher consciousness can bring forth many different lifetimes, but you chose one of a woman in a poor family and another of a man, a tennis player. So I wonder why you chose those particular lifetimes. The contrast between rich and poor being content with having little and being content having a lot. And why is that important or relevant to Mindy's life today? Because she has had little and wanted more and she's had it all and still been sad. So, what do you want her to understand? That the happiness is from within. The contentment doesn't exist in monetary things. Can you help her understand what purpose you selected for her for this lifetime? What is it that you'd like her to experience? To trust her inner voice, tune out of the world, and go within to find 
what brings her happiness. That it doesn't come in things and from people. I mean, he has always looked for others to bring her happiness and it's felt lonely at times. So she's had quite a shift in her life in the past few years. She stepped away from traditional religion and religious community where she was a very active member towards more of an inner spiritual search. She's still struggling with losing touch with that community that was so meaningful to her. The church played an important role for her in the first life that you brought up. Is there a connection between that? Is there some sort of experience that she still had to have in the church, or is it completely unrelated? So I had to wake her up, I had to shake her, tell her that it wasn't real, it wasn't authentic, that's not who God is. In the homosexual life, he didn't speak his truth. He didn't live in the truth. He listened to the world. And so he was lonely. Yet he continued to insist that that's how he wanted to be, that yep. he wanted to be independent. Was that really independence or something else? No, oh, he was a prisoner. He wasn't living in his authentic self. That makes you a prisoner. So help me to understand how that's relevant to her right now. Are there areas in which she's not authentic or she lives like a prisoner? She's learning. It's uncomfortable for other people, but she knows that she has to live her authentic self. And help her understand what her authentic self, how it would express itself. Or is there a more authentic path that she would be more aligned with? Because that is what she's searching for, to really find herself and her path. It would mean expressing her views and opinions and be confident in the answers that she gives. She is not confident because she's unsure, but she knows. She trusts that inner voice. Would that be in her marriage or outside of it? It's both. She has to stand in her truth. So, awakening to her own inner authenticity and becoming more aligned with her higher self, that is the purpose of her life? Yes. And so, with that purpose in mind, is there anything particular that she should be doing with her life? Yeah. Are there skills or things that she would gain more satisfaction from doing. Yeah, to just love others, help, and use every opportunity that comes her way. It's not big. She senses that there has to be more to her life. So are you saying that she finds ways to show and share love with others that will give her that sense of fulfillment. Yes. The little opportunities doesn't have to be big. It's all of the little opportunities we have it may not be a big monumental accomplishment. It's all of the little things. Now I'd like you to help her understand 
any kind of soul agreements that she has made with her husband in this life. What purpose does he serve in her life? That she must be in with unconditional love. Mm -hmm. She must also learn to protect her peace. So is she still in alignment with him? Or are they still helping each other on a soul level? They're still helping. Now what about her mother? Why are they together? She needed her mom to show her the positive side. She had to have her mom because she lives in such a dark place has to be able to see the good no matter what the bad is she has to see the good and know that there's always a solution so her mom shows the dark place and that she could choose happiness her mom stays there. So Mindy needed to know that you don't have to stay there. I see. Mindy wants to know who she is. Can you help her define that a little bit clearer? She's a kind and compassionate person. She's stubborn and needs to let go of her ego and be less prideful. What is the trajectory of her life? Is there a particular path she needs to travel or just becoming more authentic and more loving and sharing love with others? That's the path. There's no big plan. It's simple. Mindy says that she usually waits for God to make a decision to tell her what to do. I wonder if you can help her understand if she is a decision maker or if everything is decided for her. Can she make decisions about the direction of her life? Yes, she makes the decisions. She calls all the shots. She'll need to learn to be more resilient and stick to her goals. And how can she do that? What is holding her back? Moving the doubt. She's not made the choice. She's not made the choice. She's not made up her mind. She waffles. She's back and forth. She's all over, all the time. So what is it that's really holding her back? What's making her so indecisive? Lack of confidence in herself and her abilities and her gifts. So she becomes more authentic and connects more with you. Would that help her gain more confidence in the decisions or the, the choices or the, the information that's coming to her? Yes, she'll need to learn to go inward and to quiet the noise. She wonders how she fits into this world. What would be your answer to that? How does she fit in? She fits in when she is loving and compassionate and kind and finds opportunities to help others. That's what fulfills her. Okay. So before we let you go, is there any last message that you want to give to her directly? She's loved and to get out of her own way. Okay, thank you. So now I'm going to ask higher consciousness to recede to where it belongs. 
with much love and thanks for the help and information that it has been giving Mindy today. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the session. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you click on the bell, you will be notified of any of my future postings. Thank you. Bye.